excited about this one. The Jemadar battle cruiser was one of three types of ship that made up the backbone of the Dominion fleet in the 2370s. The smallest and most common was the Jemadar fighter, the largest was the Jemadar battleship, while the battle cruiser was somewhere in the middle both in terms of size and firepower. Despite being known as Jemadar battle cruisers, they were in fact not designed or engineered by the Jemadar. Instead, the technology came from the founders, a race of shapeshifters who ruled the Dominion, a massive interstellar empire that had covered large areas of the Gamma Quadrant. Using their know how and technology gathered from other races that they had subjugated, the founders created a vast fleet of ships that were crewed by the Jemadar, their genetically engineered foot soldiers. As the Jemadar had no need for recreation or relaxation, or even to eat or sleep, the sheep, the sheep, the ships they used were extremely functional. Without the need for amenities such as sick bay or food replicators, the Jemadars could be packed into their ships and battle cruisers, carried as many as 2,500 troops. Each ship was typically commanded by one forter, who oversaw operations from the bridge. The command centre had no chairs and no view screen, as it was deemed unnecessary for the Jemadra crew to be able to see outside the ship. They merely had to follow orders. Instead, the Forter and the highest ranking Jemadar, known as the First, were shoulder mounted virtual display units. That allowed them to view incoming transmissions of the ship around the ship of the space around the ship by simply turning their head. At 639 metres long, the battle cruiser was roughly the same size as the Starfleet Galaxy class, and its iron propulsion units were capable of taking it to speeds of at least as high as warp 9.6. Among its most notable features, the battle cruiser was equipped with deflector technology that could repulse tracked beams as well as an anti proton beams that could detect cloaked vessels. A sail designed primarily for battle. The most impressive aspect of this ship was the weaponry. They were armed with torpedoes and at least six faced Boleron beam weapons. Evidence of the firepower of the battle cruisers came in the early months of the Dominion War, after the combined Federation and Klingon fleets found themselves constantly on the run. When the Alliance engaged the Jemadar in the Tyra system, only 14 out of 112 ships survived the assault. reasons for the battle cruiser's early success during the war was that their phased polar on beam weaponry was capable of penetrating the deflector shields of the Alliance ships with ease. Later shield upgrades to the Alliance's ships meant that they became more resistant to phased polar on beam fire, but still could not resist many hits before their shields failed. In late 2375, Orsham had ships retrofitted with a Breen energy dampening weapon, following the Breen's alliance with the Dominion. This advanced weapon worked by draining the energy of a targeted ship, in effect making them sitting ducks to be picked off by conventional weapons. For a time it looked as if the Dominion would win the war because of this weapon, until a Jemadar ship fitted with the technology was captured. Allied engineers were then able to study it and develop a countermeasure that made their ships immune to it. 
Nonetheless, the battle cruisers continued to prove a formidable foe, and hundreds of ships were destroyed on both sides in the final battle. The Allies eventually prevailed, but it was only when Odo managed to convince the founder leader to surrender that Shemadar stood down. Once the Confederation Alliance had developed countermeasures to the Breen Energy Dampening Weapon, they seized their opportunity and launched a massive offensive in a bold effort to bring the war to an end. In the subsequent Battle of Cardassia, involving hundreds of starships, both sides suffered huge losses, with the Federation Alliance losing a third of its fleet before finally breaking the Dominion's defensive lines. Regrouping at Cardassia Prime, the Shemadar's fleet still had thousands of ships and would have been prepared to fight to the bitter end. But Odo cured the female changeling of their morphogenic virus that was killing her and persuaded her to call an end to the fighting by standing down her forces and surrendering. 